Tess. Oh, my. <laughs> to you as well. Snuffly, snuffly. All right. Hey, all you big cat lovers. It is me, Derek, again, and we are here for another exciting episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. And it is a super duper awesome special webcast because I think, I think it's the first ever webcast where I actually have uh, another person who is a dedicated individual that's going to be with me for the duration of the webcast. This right here is Dr. Frank Mandel of the University at Buffalo. Am I, do I got that right? You do. Okay. Uh, so up in Buffalo, uh, New York, and he is an expert on the teeth of big cats, uh, specifically saber-toothed cats and all manner of large felid chomp chomps. Now, Dr. Frank is doing some really exciting experimentation and uh, wanting to understand some pretty cool things about big cats and big cat teeth and uh, we have been helping him with his knowledge pursuits. So what are you doing here, Dr. Frank? Well, we're doing, we've been here for a long time, and as you just said, we're looking at big teeth. We're trying to figure out how cats actually kill their prey. Believe it or not, that's not known. So we've uh, devised, with the help of the people here at CARE, huge help. Yeah. Um, we intercept the, the cows and horses that are going to be cat food, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we do some pretty weird experiments, but we're, in effect, biting those animals in the neck with a cast of either a modern day big cat, lion or tiger, or a saber tooth. And you're talking about the big iron, like jaw, exactly you correct. know, apparatus, exactly that, correct. that cru So basically, it's pretty crazy. Before, like food that's already slated to be going to the cats, uh, don't need the livestock, cows and horses, we actually uh, will take the heads, we uh, give uh, Dr. Frank access to the heads, and then he is actually able to put them in his apparatus and uh, it's some pretty amazing stuff because uh, you're, you're actually gauging the, uh, the flow of, uh, of, of, of blood and the, the amount of pressure it actually takes to yep. be able to shut off the carotid arteries. Is that yep. correct? We're looking at arteries. We're looking at airway to find out if the cat bites this horse or cow, whatever it might be, what happens? Chomp, chomp. Your teeth. Yeah. She's like, my teeth. <laughs> what happens to that animal's neck? And so we knew from the get-go that they were going to do something, either close off the airway or cl close off the blood supply. Yeah. We're trying to figure out which. Um, so what is, uh, are, now have you, because uh, you've, you've been able to, to do a few, have you actually did, gleaned some interesting information so far? Yeah, we're pretty sure that they don't do much of anything to the airway. Hmm. Uh, and if you watch the films of animals in the wild, cats in the wild, you can watch, even though the voiceover often says, Here's a cat strangling some animal, but you can watch the animal breathing and you can hear the breath so you know full well <laughs> that it isn't airway. Goodness gracious. Uh, so in effect, they're actually shutting off the uh, flow of blood to the brain then. That is correct. And so the animal will pass out in a matter of a few seconds and they often say, oh, the animal's dead. Well, he's not dead. If the cat lets go inside of six minutes, that animal will get up and run off. <laughs> wow. So the cat has to learn, and I think it is learned, to have to hold to keep that blood from going to the brain for six minutes, at which time the animal will not recover. Goodness. That's pretty amazing stuff. It is pretty cool. It now, pretty cool. on top of that, you're also engaged in some other scientific uh, endeavors here with some of the cats out here. Oh, hold on one second. Right. Hold on one second. Hi, Boo Bear. Hi. How's Craig? Are you two having, uh, you two having an agreeable time? Uh, just so you know, Frank, the, her ball, uh, we've named it Craig, uh, Craig, the, Craig the Precious. Um, precious. Yeah, it's the Precious, because that's what she treats. I know. Yeah. Always in contact. Always, always. She has to be. She's a little bit obsessive, but, uh, you know, we still love her. Boy, good work. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, some of the other things that you're actually working on is to make an accurate assessment of bite strength, is that, that correct? That is correct. And so we actually do work with the cats this time, and we've over years, and it's taken us years to figure out how to do this, uh, but we now have a means of putting in essentially plastic blocks, and the cats bite on them, and we have that hooked up to a truck, 
and a witch. Mm -hmm. And so we can play tug of war with these cats. They put impressions in the plastic. I measure those indents and can tell you how much force it takes to push a tooth that deep into that plastic. Now that, that's pretty, uh, pretty amazing because uh, I've seen other people, they've done different kind of uh, uh, bite strength type assessments, but they're basically, they're, they're only getting part of the picture because they're actually going past the canines, isn't that correct? I, as far as I know, that is correct. Most of the things I've seen, people are, are gauging what the bite force is in the cheek teeth back on the carnassials where mm -hmm. they cut. Uh, and that's an important measurement. They also do that by throwing something in there and the cat snaps at it. And, mm. and so that's, that's the equivalent of bat speed. <laughs> okay. Right? So yeah. when you slam your jaws shut, right, you'll get a higher force than if you just sure. bite slowly. Sure, 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 sure. So in this case, it doesn't matter what the speed is because they're pushing the impressions into the plastic. No, you want to actually determine what uh, like their, their overall like ability for continuous force would then be. Well, and I'm particularly interested in what the forces are at the canine that's what I think where the killing Kill. Yeah. Adorable killing. All of that fun stuff. What are you looking at, buddy? Flash. What's over there? I don't know, but you're just looking awful handsome right now. Looking awful handsome. Okay, so two separate scientific experiments that Dr. Frank and his uh, wife Sandy are out here performing. But wait! There's still more. Uh, not satisfied with trying to understand those things. Dr. Frank is actually wanting to glean information about other elements of big cat physiology. And what is that all about? Well, uh, these are big cats and they, they have virtually no way to cool themselves other than let water evaporate off their tongue. And so big cats, particularly tigers, often have pools or ponds in their home range because they're so, they get so hot in the, in the tropics. And so I'm interested in a, a piece of tissue inside of their lip, which is pretty hard to see because it's often black like the inside of their lip. But we're gonna be lucky enough, we can see it right here. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe a little bit. It's actually this stuff kind of here. It kind of kind of sits down in their lips. Is. There yes. we go. There it is. That little patch. When they're relaxed, their lips droop. This and then this you stuff can see right this here. Little... This thing. Yeah. And it sticks up behind their lower canine and their first premolar because there's a gap in there, and their head is down and so spit that they're producing wants to run out. Mm -hmm. And so this I call it a dam because I think that's what it does. It dams that fluid in there, so the tongue is constantly bathed in saliva, and then they can continue to dampen their tongue and then let it evaporate. That's how they cool themselves. So it maintains the uh, the hypothesis is that that is there. It is an uh, evolutionary trait that allows them to uh, maintain fluid inside of their mouth. It's, correct. It's water conservation. Yeah, I yeah. think that's what it is. You have a dam in your mouth, possibly, but that's what Dr. Frank is trying to figure out. Right. And you're basically you're you're. Uh, you know, taking uh, uh, ground temperature measurements, and then you're also taking air temperature measurements, um, and then uh, determining, uh, like, you're actually uh, taking note of, like, like how, uh, upper, uh, you're, you're having better words. I'm sorry, folks. My, again, my words again. <laughs> tongue-tied. I am a little bit tongue-tied. A little bit. But uh, you're actually taking measurements of the cat's mouths themselves. Yes. Yes. We're taking measurements of the environment around them, airspeed, you know, all those kinds of things. And as you might imagine, when it's really hot, these guys are sitting there with the mouth hanging open. And so I think that's when they're most vulnerable to losing fluid. And that's when this dam should be up. On the other side, and so as this cat walks by, the droop, the lip is drooped, but it looks like it's, you don't see the teeth because this dam is covering at least the lower teeth, not the uppers. And that's where the spit is, is on the lower jaw, not the upper. Um, so it's, it's pres presumably or potentially a way of keeping that moisture in. When they, when they come and greet, they often close their mouth and they chuff, they do other things. When they do stinky face, when they are sniffing the other species, or other sex rather, they'll 
They'll open their mouth, but they'll pull that down. Actually, that hold on one second. Down. We're going to run out of time really quick. Because the, the doing the dual camera thing, I only have uh, oh, 10 nice. minutes. Oh. oh, wait, actually, it's recording right now. I must have just hit the button again. Okay, so we are. <laughs> let's just go ahead and just start right, right where we were at, right there. Well, I, again, these guys have the capacity. They control this, the, this dam going up and down. Mm -hmm. So when they do this stinky face, this so-called flaming, um, they can like... pull that. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. They pull that dam down. When they snarl at somebody to say, hey, I mean business, they want to show those teeth, they can pull the dam down. So they can push it up, they can pull it down. But it's, we're just trying to collect data to show that it, that it does have something to do with temperature regulation. It's that damn dam. Am I right, Dr. You, Frank? You are. It's a damn dam. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh. I won't confirm. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is actually uh, this is really amazing stuff. Um, and uh, it can have some uh, long-ranging implications for uh, 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 understanding of big cat physiology. and. Um, well, you know. I think the fact that we're able to do this here and that we are doing it and it's not mentioned anywhere in the literature tells you how little we know about these cats. Mm -hmm. And these cats, as you know, are exceedingly endangered. And so uh, it's, it, and it's very tough to get next to wild cats. Not only are they endangered, like we've got some that are missing some parts. I mean, come on, look at this right here. It's okay. This, it's okay, sweetie pie. No one's gonna notice though. You're the prettiest <laughs> pirate in the history of ever. She's just like now you're bringing attention to my eye. Hey, Savannah. <laughs> oh, okay. She's I think focused. I think that she's either focused or she's probably a little bit upset that maybe I was actually calling Let's attention. See, her mouth is closed. When she's focused, her mouth closes. Yeah. Oh, but um, yeah, the. Uh, the ability that, uh, well, I guess the ability to, to, to glean this type of information, um, you know, from these animals in a more uh, structured environment is uh, definitely beneficial to trying to get that knowledge. These then. cats have to be used to people. You can't get close enough to take any measurements without them eating you in the wild. That is true. Or running from you. you know? I, it would be a little bit difficult to go into uh, the wild and actually put a thermometer inside a cat's mouth and get underneath their tongue. That is. You know? So here's a great place. They know you. We can experiment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and also, um, once we uh, uh, once we get the uh, uh, the bite apparatus uh, design amendment approval, uh, we're actually going to be doing a little bit of uh, tiger fishing, I guess, so to speak. Yeah. Pretty soon. We'll which, be dragging some big fish. Look at her. She is just looking at us right now. Uh, Danya loves me. Oh, she does Danya love you? She would love to eat me. Look just at that. Just stay right there. She just stares every time I go by. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, that's too funny. Danya and Dr. Frank. She does. Oh, my goodness. Can you come this way? I can. She will follow. Notice she does not move a muscle. When I go by, oftentimes she'll come up on the screen, bang, when I've got my back to it, but not before. But that's that's a stock. Absolutely, it is. Stock. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it's only for me. I mean, I feel special. Here. Yeah, you should. You should. <laughs> I can feel that stare right through my shirt. Danya, what are you doing? Ooh, what comes. are you doing? Are you being mischievous? And then she comes up and wants to see. Look at that. Yeah, she's actually being a little bit. Oh, oh no, my no. goodness. Yeah. All righty, Danya. Danya, Danya, Danya. Cool. Danya and Levi both <laughs> have a special fondness for Dr. Frank. For Dr. Frank. Yes. Cool. Well, I think that that was a really awesome conversation. I appreciate the uh, joining of me on this uh, glorious walk around the compound webcast. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, it's always really exciting uh, when we're able to get some. Uh, get some things done with Dr. Frank here. Um, Thank you for having us. We really love it here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Crazy Pants over here. So, I hope that you folks at home enjoyed that episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. And we're going to go ahead and try to get away from Miss Danya, who is acting a little bit Crazy Pants. So, uh, take care, folks. Bye-bye.